Welcome to today's daily devotional. I hope you are having a phenomenal day. Let's get into the devotional today. Every person who asks Jesus to come in their life and forgive them of their sin wants a relationship with God. I mean, that's what we signed up for. We want to be close to God. But the only way that someone could become close to someone is to spend time with them. It's impossible to have a close relationship with someone if you never spend any time with that person talking and listening to them. It's the same way in our relationship with God. If you never spend time with him, talking to him, listening to him, you'll never be close to him. So yesterday we said that prayer is us talking to God. And today we're going to look at how God talks to us. Now the primary way that God speaks to us is through the Bible. All we have to do to be near to God is open up the book of the Bible and he will speak to us. Did you know that in an average year, a person spends 2,000 hours a year working, or if you're a student, about 1,100 hours in class? This year, not as many. The average person sleeps nearly 3,000 hours a year and spends about 550 hours eating and about 1,500 hours watching TV. I think that number's gone up significantly since this virus stuff has started, don't you? Did you know that the Bible can be read from front to back in about 90 hours or 15 minutes a day? The entire New Testament can be read in 20 hours, which is only about three minutes a day for a year. Now, although it only takes a small percentage of our time, very few people will read through the Bible in their entire lifetime. And that's amazing to me because we're staking our entire eternity on whether or not this book is true or false. Don't you think it may be worth three minutes of your time a day? Every one of us needs to set aside some time to read the Word of God. Luke 5, 16 says, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. It's a constant theme. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus spent time away from the crowds, away from the people, and he just got alone with God. Now, if the Son of God saw that as a necessity, how much more do we need this as well? So why is reading the Bible so important? Why do you hear that all the time? Well, if we don't read the Bible daily, then we won't understand what God's direction is for our life. And if we don't read the Bible daily, we'll lose track of what matters in life and end up giving our lives to lesser pursuits. If if we don't read the Bible daily, we'll lose spiritual strength and become easily overwhelmed. Friends, if we don't read the Bible daily, we won't hear from God because the number one way God speaks to us is through his word. It is important that you get a Bible that's easy to read and understand. Now, we recommend around here the New Living Translation of the Bible because it's so easy to read. And we also recommend that you get a New Living Translation Study Bible. Now, you can download the Bible app or you can read the Bible right from the Sagebrush app. In in fact, we have reading plans that are right on the app that'll help you stay on track. My youngest daughter, Cammie, and I, I'm so proud of her, we just finished reading the New Testament together and now we're reading through the Old Testament. As you read the Bible, uh, all of a sudden, it'll come alive if you'll read it with your senses. You got to picture the setting in your mind when you're reading the Bible. You got to capture the emotions of what's going on in the characters' lives. These are real people going through real things. Let let me show you how you can capture the setting and capture the emotion. In Genesis chapter 39, Joseph is enticed to commit adultery with his master's wife. Now, when I read that passage, I can smell her cheap perfume. I see the desperation and the lust in her eyes, and I feel the fear and the anxiety that Joseph felt. My mind races with his mind. My heart beats fast with his heart. What would I do if I found myself in this situation? Would I run or would I stay? Would I engage in that which is dishonorable to God or would I do the right thing and get away no matter what the cost? Joseph looks at her and says, how can I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? Great answer. I need to remember that if I ever find myself in close proximity with a woman with cheap perfume on. Do you see how this story comes alive and how God can speak to us? Ask yourself as you read the Bible, how's this apply to my life? What do I need to stop doing? What do I need to start doing? What do I need to start believing or stop believing? What does God want me to do about what I just read? Now, the best place to study the Word of God is in a small group. So you need to sign up for one, would you? In a small group, you're going to find people who love God just like you do and who are trying to develop their relationship with God just like you are. In our small groups, we talk about the message we heard from the weekend worship experience, so you're prepared for small group if you just show up to the service on the weekend. And now that's easier than ever before because you just got to watch it in your home. Over time, 
you will develop great friendships with these people. In fact, some of the best friends you make in life might be in your small group. You need to sign up for one. You need to sign up for one as soon as possible. So let's recap. We find a place to meet with God every day. We spend a few minutes just talking to God about what's going on in our life. We read a chapter of the Bible every day. There's a daily devotional on the Sagebrush app to help you spend time with God as well. Then write down a few things that God revealed to you that you want to remember, like in a notebook. And the last thing is this. Get someone to do this with you. Have a friend hold you accountable. It's so important that you do this together with someone else so you can develop this new habit together. When Cammie and I were reading through the New Testament, if that little booger didn't remind me, I think I might have forgotten on a few days. And by the way, I had to remind her for a few as well. Friends, we're as close today as we've chosen to be. When you gave your life to Christ, you did not do that to follow a bunch of rules and regulations, right? I mean, when you gave your life to Christ, you did that so you could do life together with Him. You didn't want to be alone anymore. You didn't want to face your fears anymore. You wanted a friend, a leader, a savior who could do life together with you. And that relationship is available to you. And all you have to do is spend time every day with the one you say you love with all your heart and soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Friends, it's time to invest in our relationship with God. This weekend, we're continuing our brand new series called Monsoon. If you live in New Mexico, you already know what a monsoon is. For those of you who are not from around here, let me explain. During the months of July and August, storms blow up quickly over our mountains. They only last for a little while, but when the storm hits, it hits with force and intensity. I mean, it feels like God's just throwing down rain upon us. And just when you think that storm is over, guess what? The next day, another storm forms. Our world's been in a monsoon with this virus, and just when you think that maybe the storm is over, it finds a new level of intensity. Just when you think the storm is over, another storm blows up over the horizon. That's why this weekend we're going to look at the monsoon of suffering. Why do we suffer? Where does suffering come from? Where's God in the midst of all this suffering? Now, friends, you can watch us on Facebook. You can watch us using the Sagebrush app. You can go to our webpage. You can watch it using Apple TV. Just go to the App Store, download the app on your TV. You can also watch on YouTube and on Roku TV. Now, make sure you share this with your friends and invite them to watch online. So what are you going to do when the monsoon of suffering comes raining down on you? I'll see you this weekend.